All right, let's do something incredibly bad for business. Let's go. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Heme Show. I, like always, am your host Stuart and this is edited by Andy. I can't help but giggle every time because there is a fuck up every time. Oh god fucking damn it, I've sworn again. Fuck's sake. You know what to do, Andy. Soz, mate. All right. So, today's episode, how to break up with your coach. Bye, have a great time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that conversation. Let's have it. Uh, right, so... It seems more dramatic than it actually is, basically. But remember, you're a consumer. You have the consumer rights. You are buying a product, and if that product is not fit for you, how do you go about raising that conversation with your coach or your club? Run, bitch! On the face of it, this could actually kind of seem like a bad business decision from my point of view, because I'm kind of telling my customers, my students, my guys, or girls, whatever, or, you know, um, how to leave. But not really. Uh, but I do think this is a really important conversation to have. And what you, as a HEMA customer for this conversation, uh, how we go about doing this, how you about, go about raising this question, this conversation. Thing to remember is the HEMA clubs, more so than almost any club I've been part of, just thinking back now. Uh, yeah, actually, out of all the clubs I've even been a member, a coach, or peripherally involved with, they are the ones that run the most on the cult of personality. And that's really important to remember. Because if you are not getting a good enough service, sometimes that cult of personality aspect can really limit your uh, uh, intentions or your responsibility to ask questions to demand a better service as a customer as a paying customer, uh, but you have to remember that you are and you deserve to get a decent level of service. So how do you go about raising that conversation? It's incredibly awkward. I know some of you view this from outside of the UK, which still fucking blows my mind. Uh, I'm still amazed that anyone watches this shit uh, other than my mother. So, joking, she hates me. Um, but. Yeah, how do you go about it? It can be an awkward conversation to have, it can be a little sticky. I know it's a very British thing to do, just head down and plough through and write a passive aggressive letter about it in the extreme. But actually, you need to talk to your coach about it for two reasons, and I'll get into that now. I'm fucking about my eye loads, I've got an eye infection at the moment. Yeah, pingo. Right, so first and foremost, you need to identify whether you are getting a bad service or not. Now, think about it like this. What you receive as a paying member is the product. You're not the product. From my point of view, as a coach, as a club owner, you're the product. But as a customer, the lessons, the weekly uh, club, the lesson planning, the kit providing, the, the information that you receive, that's the product from your point of view. So it's slightly different from a coach's point of view and to a customer's point of view. Uh, and you have to ask yourself, are you getting a good product? Are you getting what feels like structured lessons? Are you getting a good quality product? Do you feel that your coach is knowledgeable? Do you feel that if you have more than one club, is everything equitable? Uh, is there a decent amount of kit? Is the kit knackered and old? I know I'm a bit of a bugger for that. Um, it's, from a coach's point of view, from a club owner's point of view, it's a bastard and a half trying to maintain hundreds of items of kit. Um, and you know, multiple clubs, it is so easy to do. But are you receiving good level of service in all of these areas? And also, something I've touched on in the previous episode, are you receiving enough attention from your coach? Because your money is just as good, your membership is just as good, your subs are just as good, just as valid as anyone else's in the club. But are you receiving equal attention from the coach? Is there a little bit of nepotism going on from the coach's point of view? Are they teaching their mates? Are they stood around gassing the whole time? Are they, you know, whatever, you know. And before I go too much, uh, too, further, uh, too far into this, I am gonna massively highlight, in no uncertain circumstances, that this is not based on any one person in particular. These are musings, these observations that I've had in the industry of HEMA. Um, so if anyone gets butt hurt over this, that's all on you, man. This is this is just me musing. This is not directed at any one particular way. Uh, 
I really want to be clear on that because, uh, quite frankly, I can't be fucked to bicker in the arguments in, uh, in the comments section. So, whatever. But do you get all that as a paying customer? It's a really important question. Um, now, don't forget that us coaches, us club people, we are humans too. Now, I know that sometimes I may be a superhuman in all my glory. Um, <laughs> do with that edit what you want, Andy. Jesus. But we are human too. We should be planning the lessons. We should be organized. We should get stuff sorted. But shit goes alright for us too. Sometimes we have bad days in the office. But we still need to deliver a decent level of service. So first and foremost, you need to identify whether you're actually happy at your club. Is it the club for you? Is the club's direction the correct club for you? Are you a history buff? And are you at a competition club? Are you a competitive fighter? Are you at a history club? You know, so first things first about breaking up with your coach is identify if your needs are met. Are your goals aligned with the clubs? Uh, if they're not, is there scope for you to actually get that at that club? If there is, then brilliant, just need to readjust that. Um, and then the second question is, are you receiving a decent product? And all of this, obviously, if at any point you get that tick, you go down the flow chart and you hit the yes, brilliant, quid to it, you know, good job, well done, go you. Um, but if at any point all of those lead to no, you kind of need to know how to break up with a coach because it can be very awkward. Like I said, we, or HEMA clubs, kind of run on the cult of personality. They really do. I try and dilute that within my organisation, Smart HEMA. Um, you would be able to read that if my t-shirt wasn't so old and fucked. Um, I try and dilute that as much as possible with more coaches. I've got loads of coaches. I've got, I mean, fuck it, lots. You don't, you don't need to know how many I've got. It's irrelevant. I've got lots, and I've got more being trained at the moment as well. I've got another two guys being trained at the moment. Um, and the reason why I've done that is one person can't do everything. I've tried being a one-man band for everything. It's a pain in the ass. Some it's got to give. But also you get a diluted pool of ideas, more creativity, but it does dilute that cult of personality. And what it does is it just helps remove that obligation to that one person. If the person that's running the club, which we very often do, we cross over from coach to mate, it can be very hard to have that conversation of, mate, this is shit. I'm not enjoying it. Make it right for me. Um, but you have that right to say that. So if at any point you've gone through that flowchart, you've identified that this club isn't for you, you need to understand, feel confident that you can actually be like, you know what, this ain't for me, I need to talk to the coach. But there's right and wrong ways of doing it. Um, and it's, it's a tricky situation, it really is. Because I like to consider myself friendly to all of my members. But then equally on the same hand, I would like to feel that my members could come to me with issues and be like, Stu, today's lesson was wank. What's the deal? Uh, I like, I'd like to think that I could have that frank conversation with my guys. Uh, or girls, or you know you are, fuck I mean. Um, so how do you go about doing that? Well, first and foremost, if you are upset or pissed off that you've received a bad service, don't act whilst you're in that headspace. The last thing you want to do is go off half-cocked or half-drunk in my situation. And then say something you either regret or that is just not constructive or not maybe worded the right way. If you are heated at that point in time, take a step back, chill out for a week, maybe address it the next week or via text or email, or whatever, whatever works for you. Um, so first and foremost, don't make an emotional decision. That's not going to work. Second of all, make sure that you can almost itemize or bullet point your grievances. Uh, so, you know, if you're a history guy, for example, and you're, I'd like to do it the other way around, actually. Why not? If you're a competition guy and you're at a history club, you know, make sure that you constructively get the point across of saying, I like what you're doing, but this isn't for me. Is there any way that we can pivot what you're doing, what you're delivering to me? It might be a case of they do the history stuff in the group sessions, and then you can maybe get some one-to-one -one time with the coach that's more orientated around your needs. Um, and if that's not the case, if there's no wiggle room, if there's no ability to do that, then you need to figure out how you actually go about leaving that club. Um, so first and foremost, identify, then you need to try and problem solve, and then you kind of need to go, yeah, you know what, this club ain't for me. And that's quite a tricky one to do. You need to Google, see if there's any clubs in your area that may help, may be able to do that, may be able to fit that niche. Uh, but once you've done that, you just need to talk to your coach and be like, look, I appreciate what you're doing here, but I think I might be done at this club. I like what you're doing, you're doing good work, 
but I need something different. This is a me problem, not a you guys problem. Thanks for all you've done. See you later. Um, but just be constructive about it. Be friendly about it. Coaches get it. Coaches do get it. We're fine with it. We're running a business. It's all business at the end of the day. Some of us are a bit more friendly in our business than others, but it's all business. It's cool. What we want as coaches is to know where we stand. Um, there's a right way and a wrong way of doing things. The way I just mentioned is the right way of doing it. The wrong way of doing it is either going off on one about a club, which I would like to think people don't really do, or just lying to the coach and being like, oh yeah, actually I'm going to take a year off HEMA and then get busted a week later on Facebook at a rival club, you know, or saying, oh, I'm busy with work, I can't attend, and then a couple of, you know, clubs are very active on Facebook and social media, and so these are just examples I'm pulling out of my ass, you know, say, oh, I can't make it because of work, and then you, you suddenly you're at another club or something like that, or, oh, you know, I think, I think I might be done with HEMA, and then you go to another club, because that just pisses people off, and that makes the coaches think ill of you and the way that you've handled things. And if you meet, because the Hema universe is a small place, it's an incredibly small pond with lots of big fucking fish. Um, but it is a very small pond. And chances are you're gonna run into each other again. So just be open and forthright with people from the start. Be like, look, this ain't for me. This ain't a slate on you. It's just, we ain't jello. And that's cool. Let the coaches know. Uh, and for me personally, it pisses me off when, you know, this isn't really uh, based on anything historical, this isn't me recanting something that's happened, but just as in generally, it annoys me when I don't have the chance to win. I don't mind failing. I don't mind not providing a service that's right for someone. That's, that's business. You can't please everybody. But what annoys me is when someone's not given me the chance to rectify it. Someone goes, you know, buggers off, and they're like, oh, yeah, that's no, a shit club. They didn't do what I wanted. And I'm like, well, hang on, you never bloody spoke to me. I didn't know that's what you wanted. If you knew, if I knew that's what you wanted, I could have done something. I've got loads of coaches, I could have given you some time, I could have pivoted the lessons towards what you want. Give the coaches, or give your coach a chance to actually troubleshoot this. Um, and this is really important because it's important to have those conversations because you are a consumer. You are paying for a product. And if that product is not right for you, you need to speak up. But coaches aren't infallible. Coaches aren't omnipresent. We can't just divine from tea leaves in the air what you need. You need to have that conversation with us. So give your coach a fighting chance if you're currently not happy at your HEMA club. Um, and if that, if you, you know, if you go through that route and it's still not work, then fine, find another club, that's fine. But all I would say is just be straight with it from the start um, because you need to give people an opportunity to do the right thing. Uh, I don't really have much in the way of experience with this. I like to challenge myself, and I like to think that my product stands up. My product, from my point of view, is my club, what I provide. Uh, I openly encourage my students to go to competitions, have lessons with coaches that aren't me, uh, go to social engagements with other clubs, go to sparring days, open stuff with other clubs. I actively encourage that because I utterly have the confidence that my product stands up to scrutiny. You're the best because I hold myself to a level of excellence. Um, not in these videos, this is fucking useless. But I hold myself to that level of excellence in my club, so I'm not worried. I don't need to feel defensive. So as a coach or oh, as a club organiser, I would like people to say, look, this lesson was a bit shit. How can we do it? Oh, sweet, cool. Right, what we'll do is this. You know, it's very easy to fix that kind of stuff. Um, but if your coach is not open to that sort of stuff, then you need to start looking at alternatives. Uh, if your coach is not open to you going to other clubs, if they're very cagey about you as a asset, if they don't like you having lessons with other coaches, if they don't like you going to socials or competitions or anything like that, these are questions you need to start asking yourself and being like, oh, is this the right place for me? Uh, what are they trying to hide? Um, anyway, just musings on a theme today. I hope that was a bit of a weird one today, a bit of a... Bit of a side note, not really anything too HEMA related, but a couple of people have been talking to me who've come from other clubs and being like, oh man, like, I just, I was there for ages, wasting my time, you know, so always just feel like you have the confidence and the comfort to have that open discussion with your coach. Anyway, hope it helps. See you later. Oh shit, I'm not testing mic. Cunt, cunt.
Cunt. Cunt.